Howdy, howdy, howdy. My name is Anacha Sasuke, and welcome back to Let's Read the SP Foundation Wiki. <clears throat> In the last episode, we read about a porcelain doll, some nesting dolls, a forklift, the eye of the forest, and disappearance. In this one, we're going to be checking out the paradoxical insurance policy, the impossible colors, click anywhere computer, the jaded ring, and the may my face that I may be. So, let's check out the paradoxical insurance policy. It's safe, supposedly. But, under no circumstances whatsoever is 7-Eleven to be operated. <laughs> uh, no Frosties for anybody. Operation, not Frosties, Slurpees. Frosties are Wendy's. Whatever, the joke stands. Operation or attempted operation of 7-Eleven is to be punished in all cases by the severest and most extreme measures me uh, available to the SP Foundation. Enforcement of this zero tolerance policy, should, be, should it become necessary, is to become the single highest priority assignment for all available Foundation personnel. The current instance of 7-Eleven is to be embedded in concrete and stored in a Type 2 high value item vault at stored site blank, secured by at least four multiple, multiply redundant, is it supposed to be multiple redundant, locking systems and guarded by armed Foundation agents of no less than level 2 security clearance. The item should never be stored in an operable condition. In any major crisis during which the survival of the SP Foundation or of any significant, uh, approximately 20%, portion of human civilization is called into question, the item supervisors are to destroy it immediately and determine a safe time and place for its reassembly. No person capable of operating 7-Eleven is permitted to have any knowledge of the contents of String 17, see below. Description. Built by the SCP Foundation from plans retrieved, data redacted, 7-Eleven is a device assembled from several highly modified data redacted, high-energy physics equipment. Its primary function data expunged. In short, it is capable of sending data into its past and of receiving data from its future. Transmission is strictly one way. Independent operation of the item is therefore casually impossible. Or causal, causally impossible. Any message it receives will necessarily be sent at some point in its future. All 7-Eleven messages predetermine their own existence and content. To date, exactly 17 messages have been received via 7-Eleven. The first string was received at 1300 on blank 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 the day of its creation and sent four minutes later. It consisted only of the characters TEST. With successive operations, signal quality has declined dramatically. String 1 was transmitted perfectly, reading precisely TEST both when sent and when received. String 16 when sent also read precisely TEST when received. Uh, when received, it consisted of the characters T dollar sign three S carrot F at followed by five kilobytes of meaningless noise. Additionally, over the course of testing, four strings were received which were never sent and which consists demonstrably uh, P whatever that means of nothing but noise. String 17 was detected data redacted 10 years after the object's construction. It consists of 347 characters either heavily encrypted or data redacted. Within the first 50 characters, however, is a su sufficient data to establish blank that it will be set by a duly authorized agent of the SCP Foundation. SCP-1780. Its, uh, origin, it, its date of origin is unknown. To date, it has not yet been sent. Since String-17 will necessarily be sent, and since it is known data redacted to be sent by an agent of the Foundation, the survival of the SCP Foundation and of humanity in general is guaranteed at least until such time as String-17 is transmitted. Transmission of String 17 must therefore be postponed at all costs. The above containment procedures are calculated to ensure that it will not be sent until such a time as the SCP Foundation is too weak to enforce them, in which case the Foundation will have already de facto ceased to exist. Note, 7-Eleven is an insurance policy of sorts. Until we send String 17, we know we have to survive any crisis. Otherwise, that string is a BL class predestination paradox. Once it's sent, we no longer have that guarantee. Yes, we'll have to fail at some point. We did receive string 17 after all. But the longer we postpone it, the longer we know we can survive. Stop that signal, people. Our continued existence may just depend on it. Dr. P. Somebody. Okay. I wonder why they made that. Now it's time for the impossible colors. The light generating apparatus designated 7121 is stored fully assembled in a secure storage room at Research Site 14. Lots of stuff at that site. The room's air is to be HEPA filtered, HEPA filtered, HEPA, and anyone entering must wear a clean room suit to minimize introduction of dust that could interfere with the optics of 7-12-1. Anyone making adjustments to the components of one must wear non-powdered uh, nitrile, nitrile gloves. Latex gloves are not permitted as Dr. Blank is severely allergic. 
The vibration absorbing base of one is attached securely to a 1.5 meter high table that is securely bolted to the floor of the room. The layout of this secure storage room is, a, is an L shape with the apparatus aimed at the far wall perpendicular to the door. No video recording devices are permitted in the room and all cameras viewing the entrance are to be fitted with one Rattan number 90 filter and one linear polarizing filter with the axis of polarization oriented horizontally. The emitting lens of one is aimed at the rear wall and optical target should be kept behind the apparatus except during testing. A swint forest panel is in place in front of the uh, emitting lens of one as a component of the fail secure system. The rear wall of the room is tiled with swint forest uh, light absorbing panels. Ten standard 300 watt metal halide floodlights are aimed at the target wall and are to be tuned to uh, turned on no less than one hour before one is connected to a power supply to ensure that the color temperature has stabilized at 5,000 Kelvin. These floodlights are shuttered as an as a component of the fail secure system. A fail secure system is installed in the room, as I'm sure we've ga uh, gathered. During operation, the floodlights will be shuttered and the panel in front of the emitting lens will retract. The researcher conducting an experiment must maintain constant pressure on a thumb switch and a bite plate will detect jaw clenching that may indicate a seizure. If pressure on the thumb switch is released, pressure on the bite plate exceeds normal limits or power to the system is lost, the shutters covering the floodlights will drop away and the light absorbing panel will drop into place in front of one's emitting lens. All personnel and test subjects who are present when one is powered are to be administered vision tests to measure di uh, distance, distance vision, near vision, and color perception before entering the room and immediately after leaving. Unless authorized by Dr. Blank in writing and approved by a level 4 staff member, no individual who exhibits any degree of colorblindness is permitted to enter the room. Individuals who exhibit diminished visual ability after an experiment will be held for observation for 24 hours and tested before being released. Any individuals who continues to uh, exhibit diminished visual ability after the 24 hour observation period will be prohibited from working with 712 and reassigned to a non-research position for an additional 30 days. Individuals exhibiting diminished visual ability after 30 days will be permanently reassigned. No individual who exhibits any diminished visual ability after 24 hours may be assigned to experiment further on 712. Research on 712 was coordinated by Dr. Blank. Description 712 is a pair of colors designated A and B produced by the light generating apparatus of one, or of apparatus one. A is described by test subjects as reddish green, and B is described by test subjects as yellowish blue. While prior published research into impossible colors had achieved limited success by projecting one of two component, or component colors into each eye of participants, A and B are discrete colors. While the colors of 712 can be perceived by human subjects, their wavelengths are expressed as imaginary numbers rather than wavelengths found in the visible spectrum. Specific information can be found in Dr. Blank's research notes. Are they even in here? Probably not. Subjects who view these colors report feelings of unease or awe with neither corresponding to particular post-exposure effects. Approximately 26% of subjects experience no, effect, uh, no effects after viewing 712. Approximately 74% of subjects who experience diminished visual ability after viewing 712. Uh, okay, they do. Approximately 95% of subjects who initially display diminished visual ability recover within 24 hours. Approximately 1% of those who experience diminished visual quality after 24 hours did not recover. Uh, 712-1 is a light-emitting apparatus that was removed from the laboratory of Dr. Blank Blank at Blank University. The apparatus is mounted on a vibration-dampening base. Components are labeled with stamped metal plates, and and a plate at the front of the apparatus is stamped F equals 9907 millimeters. A cord with four wires protrudes from the power supply, which is labeled in permanent marker 220 volts. The major components of one are the following. A power supply that connects to a standard US 220-volt three-phase outlet, a diode-pumped laser emitter that produces light at blank and M, an oscillator-controlled ring electromagnet that uh, surrounds the laser module connected by a power, a two power by a two-position switch with labels A and B, a series of beam splitters that divide the beam into eight optical fibers of varying lengths and arranged in various geometric patterns, a set of eight fluorite lenses that focus the output of the optical fibers onto the emitting lens. Each lens is mounted on a unique keyed base and fits into one of two slots labeled A or B. A 10 centimeter lens made from a dense material with a refractive index of redacted. This element can be rotated around its optical axis by a metal peg attached to its edge that locks into two positions labeled A and B. This is the emitting lens of one. 
And here's a note. Do not make any adjustments to one unless you have verified that power is disconnected. If you feel the basic safety rules do not apply to you, I will be more than happy to reassign you to a position in which your risk of injury will be limited to paper cuts and writer's cramp. Dr. Blank. The main switch, keyed lens spaces, and emitting lens are connected to a safety interlock that disconnects power to the laser emitter unless all components are set to either A or B. Common effects of 712. The following effects have been observed in such an exposed to 712. Perceived desaturation when viewing colors in the visible spectrum after viewing 712. After viewing 1A, subjects perceive desaturation of yellow and blue. After viewing 1B, subjects perceive desaturation of red and green. This is the most commonly reported effect. Viewing 712 is triggered severe migraine headaches with visual aura that are the end subjects predisposed to migraines on several occasions. Diminished ability of the subject's eyes to focus visible wavelengths of light while retaining the ability to focus 712 wavelengths. Temporary complete blindness to the visible spectrum has been observed in two subjects. Both subjects recovered within the 30 day observation period. Grand mal seizures. Before the recovery of one, Dr. Blank Blank appeared to have suffered a grand mal seizure. During initial experimentation, two subjects diagnosed with epilepsy suffered seizures. Recovery log. Okay. The Foundation was alerted to a possible anomalous object when Dr. Blankety Blank, a respected professor of physics at Blank University, was institutionalized following a reported nervous breakdown resulting in a fugue state lasting several days. Dr. Blank is a highly respected expert in sensitometry and had been expanding on Crane and uh, Piantonida's research into human perception of impossible colors for three years prior to the recovery of one. Research assistant studying under Dr. Blank found him unconscious in his Optus laboratory on July 2nd, 2009, after having apparently ripped the power cord of one from a bench power supply during a grand mal seizure. Foundation investigators posing as doctors with the, state de the state's Department of Mental Health interviewed Dr. Blank's assistants and found that Dr. Blank had always been obsessive about his work, often working long hours, a tendency that was also reported by former colleagues. Research assistants reported that Dr. Blank had recently begun to exhibit signs of severe stress, working around the clock and sleeping for short periods of time in his lab so as to devote more time to his work. Several interviewees noted that Dr. Blank had recently begun to make remarks about doing the impossible and discovering the next level of human perception, but that he was secretive about his work and refused to allow colleagues and research staff into his laboratory beginning three weeks prior to his seizure and breakdown. Foundation staff searched Dr. Blank's laboratory and found one mounted to a table with the emitting lens aimed at an 18% gray optical target placed 9907 millimeters from the emitting lens. On a desk behind one were a single page of handwritten calculations describing the two output wavelengths of 712 and a journal of notes. 712 was referred to simply as the machine. The contents of the second page detailed observations of 712-1's effects and Dr. Blank's personal notes. The content of the pages are transcribed as follows. Page 1, data expunged. Journal, data expunged. Dr. Blank's handwriting becomes progressively less legible towards the end of the journal as he describes growing effects of observing 712. He makes several mentions of protecting others and keeping them away from 712. After reviewing his writings, the Foundation personnel recovered 712. A cover story was presented to Dr. Blank's colleagues and researchers explaining that his research into laser technology had been classified a matter of national security. All individuals agreed to sign non-disclosure agreements that were subsequently administered Class A amnestics and implanted with false memories. Research assistants were paid stipends as compensation. One was removed and transported to Site-19. Personal Notes August 9th, 2008. I've run the calculations a dozen times, but I still can't figure out where Blank got these variables. Bypass the safety on the magnets and the beams cancel each other at the emitting lens. Rotate the lens to the wrong position and you get a blur. If the lenses don't, the magnet is... If the lenses don't, the magnet is epoxied in place and I can't remove it without damaging it irreparably. As close as I can approximate, the field it generates is redacted, oscillating cleanly from positive to negative it redacted. Everything should be well within the visible spectrum, but I can't figure out how the magnet does what he says it does, or exactly how that lens focuses light it redacted. I'm submitting a request for human testing. August 13th. I've made no progress on the math, and neither have any of the Foundation's other physicists. The, uh, the emitting lens seems to have a refractive index that varies significantly across the visible spectrum, and the plot definitely isn't linear. It's almost asymptotic at various at certain points. I have a hunch, but I don't I don't have the equipment at this site to test it, and I'm going to have to wait at least a few days. Hopefully I'll be able to test it soon. It sounds crazy, but I'm inclined to trust Dr. Blank's research. Redacted. We carried out the first test today. Data expunged. The remainder of this log is awaiting declassification. Alright, 
Next up is the Click Anywhere computer. 713 is to be kept in a standard safe class inanimate object containment cell at site blank. Standard power, uh, standard positive action defenses are to remain in place at all times. It is not to be plugged in while stored. Description. 713 is a desktop personal computer running Windows 95. It bears no external manufacturer's markings, but internal inspection reveals it to be composed entirely of hardware commercially available in the late 1990s. The keyboard and mouse connectors are soldered into their sockets, and there are no ports available for peripherals except the monitor. The computer has no internet capability. The hard drive contains assorted commercially available software, including Data Expunge Office Suite, Data Expunge Image Editing Software, and Solitaire. 713's mouse may be used to move its cursor off the screen. The cursor does not change size or appearance, remaining two-dimensional, though capable of moving in three dimensions. The scroll wheel controls the Z direction, and resembling a light projection without an apparent source. It may be used to click and drag individual items. Dragged object size and mass do not seem to impede it. It has demonstrated the ability to exert forces of at least 150 kilonewtons? I assume that's kilonewtons. Care must be taken in, uh, in the use of the object, as sudden flicks of the wrist coupled with poorly timed release of the left mouse button have resulted in damage to the containment room's walls. What? Oh, okay. I, I, I read it, but it didn't connect. The mouse goes off screen like into the real world and clicks things. The right mouse button does not appear to function when the cursor is outside the monitor. However, when the word processing program is open on the monitor, left clicking on a sheet of writing material produces a cursor like that of a word processor. Typing then results in letters and composition apparently identical to the cursor, although data expunged, appearing on the writing material. They linger as long as the computer is operating, disappearing when it is shut down, and reappear upon restarting the computer and reopening the word processor. The image editing software's effects are similar, though much broader in scope. The solitaire game may be played using ordinary playing cards. Every effort must be made to avoid crashing 713. When the machine locks up, its cursor, cursor either disappears immediately, dropping any object held, or data expunged, consistent with crushing forces of over blank kilonewtons. Other error types have commensurately more damaging results. See experiment logs and incident reports for further details. Addendum. Uh, when materials tested to date with 713's word processor and uh, Materials tested to date with the word processor include copy paper, college rule notebook paper, text conformed to the lines, handmade vellum, tracing paper, data expunged, a chalkboard, and a blank wall. Testing is ongoing. Note. I will shoot the next son of a bitch that pulls a lens flare out of this thing. Dr. Blank. Note. Testing has been suspended after incident 713-3 and which disposable dude dragged to other disposable dude into the trash. Until their fate has been determined, access to 713 is denied without express authorization from level 4 staff for hire. Further testing authorized, see experiment log for details. Also, the data expunged is up. Two link. The first one is tech issues, the second one is new technical issues. And the experiment log is how long? It's not very long, but it also doesn't strike me as very important to do right now. So if anybody wants me to go back and check the experiment log for 713, let me know in the comments. The Jaded Ring. Oh, the links are actually changing color now. Usually they just sort of don't do that. Cool, cool. The Jaded Ring. Everything that's made of jade in this place seems to be completely terrible. Let's see if that still holds. SCP-714 is to be stored in a reinforced high security locker that is to be accessible only to level 4 personnel due to several incidences of misuse. Description. Seemingly nothing more than a green jade ring, 714 has been shown to be able to expand and contract to perfectly fit the ring... The finger of anyone who touches it, though this is the least important of its properties. 714 only changes size when touched by a new subject. Kind of like the One Ring of Sauron, sounds like. 714 has several major effects detailed as follows. 1. Exhaustion, compulsion to rest sleep. Within minutes of putting on the ring, wearers will report feeling worn out, physically and mentally exhausted. Due to this, they will feel driven to sit down and rest for a bit on the nearest available furniture and will likely fall asleep within the space of a few hours. If someone falls asleep wearing 714, the only known means of waking them is to remove it, at which point they may be roused by anything would, that would normally wake them up. Exhaustion effects pass within 2 or 3 hours of removing the ring if removed from a conscious subject. Those that fall asleep wearing it report feeling well rested if it is removed, even if they slept for only a few minutes. It extends no consideration towards the needs of the, its wear during their forced sleep, though most bodily functions such as breathing continue. If it is not removed and the wearer woken up, 
Most will die of dehydration or starvation within a matter of days. Its impact, if any, on aging remains untested. Whereas that retire prior to putting on 714 are at a serious risk of falling asleep on their feet, possibly falling over in the process. If no furniture or furniture-like object is available nearby, the wearers will either stand on the spot they donned 714 and attempt to fashion a resting place out of suitable materials available. The drive to sleep can be resisted, but requires formidable willpower and self-control on the part of the wearer. Even so, the falling effects make it uh, impractical for field use. 2. Slowed reactions, sluggish movement. Subjects uh, suffer from severely impaired reaction times. A normally sharp, alert, and physically fit subject can have a hard time catching a slow moving object thrown to them, even if warned and giving ample time to prepare. Anyone wearing 714 should not be allowed to operate heavy machinery or other vehicles under any circumstances. Wearers of 714 move much slower than normal, managing an average walking pace at best. Their movements are not physically slower, but they are incapable of exerting themselves. 3. Reduce mental capacity. Seemingly as a part of the mental fatigue, anyone wearing 740 claims they can that they think slowly or may even have trouble finding the words to adequately communicate that they cannot think as clearly as normal. The wearer may take a long time to think of an answer to a trivial question, e.g. what color is this red ball? Never mind uh, one that is vague or requires a more complicated response. With the removal of 714, mental capacity is restored to normal within a few minutes. Mental shield! As a dubious benefit of seemingly reduced mental capacity, whereas of 714 show abnormally high resilience to mimetic and mental influences, particularly commands or immediate effects. Weaker mimetic influences may be totally nullified by this. In both cases, the wearer feels a strong and instinctive fear of the source of the influence. This fear drives them to immediately seek shelter by any means net available, potentially by attempting to destroy the source. This shielding only lasts for as long as it is worn. They are still at significant risk to be exposed to any mimetic influences that do not take immediate effect. Exposure to such influences should be handled as normal for the source in question, as the degree of protection afforded by 714 has yet to be fully documented. In addition, normal images and sounds that would cause revulsion, nausea, etc. simply due to shocking or disturbing content have next to no effect on the wearer of 714. The wearer will not even recall seeing them once it's removed. Mundane persuasion such as motivational speeches has no effect regardless of the speaker's skill and charisma. Number 5. Chemical Tolerance just as their minds block mimetic influences, the bodies of uh, the wearers slows down and nullifies the effects of various chemicals on the body. Fully poisonous or toxic substances are generally not hindered, but those that specifically impede or enhance neural and or nervous functions in some way, such as stimulants or sedatives, have very diminished effects. With the removal of 714, this nullification effect expires instantly, whereas may still suffer from standard overdose effects whilst wearing 714. The manner or manners in which it causes its various effects has yet to be discovered and no unusual emissions of any kind have been detected despite extensive monitoring. If 714 is significantly damaged in any way, such as being broken into two or more pieces, its effects will cease immediately. If the pieces are then placed within close proximity, they will gradually reform back to a whole copy of 714, flowing as if made of liquid. Once it is fully reformed, its fun it functions return as if it was never damaged. Grinding it down to a fine powder did nothing to impede itself or repair behavior either, though the process did take considerably longer. Though the exact nature of the self-repair behavior has not been determined as of this time, it is thought 714 could theoretically recover from complete vaporization. However, due to 740's low threat level, this has been deemed an unnecessary use of resources. Footage sequences of 714 reforming from various states of disrepair are available upon request from Dr. Blank or other appropriate sources. Attempts to track the history and ownership of it have proven futile due to the nature of its recovery. Agent Blank reported feeling abnormally drowsy even after several mugs of strong coffee and was found to be wearing 714 with no memory of having come into possession of it. Agent Blank has been reprimanded as appropriate and measures have been taken to ensure 714 stays in its locker at all times. The draining effects and compulsion to rest make use of 714 as a protective measure against certain SCPs highly impractical. At this time, it is not believed to have any seri other serious effects beyond the danger of dehydration and starvation of personnel who fall asleep wearing it as a result of being unable to rouse themselves for sustenance. Experimentation Notes Text, tra t text transcripts of audio logs compiled by Dr. Blank Entry of January 5th, 2000 something. I assume that's January. And I guess it's May. Okay, so May 1st. So for all attempts to find the cause of 714's effects have proved so f uh, so far, all attempts have proven fruitless. I don't think I need to emphasize how useful this could be if we could pull it off without the negative, without the negative effects. But so far, everything we tried has come up with blanks. 
and 714 is ongoing safe Euclid classification. We know what it does, but not how it does it. As much as I want to say it's 100% safe, there's something about it that's not quite right about it. May 12th. Still making very little headway. Uh, trying to acquire a date on, on 714 has given us mixed results. Parts of it date back as far as early, very early AD, circa 100 to 200, and are probably made from, ch or probably from China. Other samples are, relatively speaking, more recent. Like it's been made out of multiple pieces, though it is without a question a single structurally flawless jade ring. On the plus side, we've had some luck finding out who owned it before, thanks to a string of reports of jade statuettes going missing when a ring matching 714's description was in close proximity to them. What a coincidence, hmm? Perhaps 714's curious regenerative and size changing capabilities stem from, for lack of a better term, assimilating other pieces of jade? Analysis has shown that 714 is much higher density than average jade, but apparently no heavier. Could be some form of extra dimensional storage, as weird as that sounds. Sure is one way of carrying the weight of the world on your shoulders. <laughs> Entry of May 27th. Okay, so, a bit more luck on the tracking front. It was originally found in the late 1800s, that is, around the 1870s to 1880s, by an archaeologist who traveled around the world seeking jade artifacts, such as statuettes and figurines that might be found in tombs or forgotten temples. He was hunting a tomb said to be rich in them. Of course, he eventually found and entered it, finding only 714 in terms of jade artifacts. Puzzling. Very few historical documents describe anything that matches 714, so it's hard to say how old it really is. Vexing. The archaeologist's personal diaries have not survived the age as well, unfortunately, and his handwriting leaves much to be desired. So it is difficult to tell whether or not he wore 714 and documented the effects of it whilst it was in his possession, or whether he never considered wearing it. What I can make out is that he quickly disposed of the ring after a number of his collection pieces went missing after spending the night in proximity to the ring with no signs of break-in or theft. Uh-huh. So it's a jade ring that eats other jade. Aren't there other, like, dangerous jade SCPs that they can just feed to this thing and neutralize them? Pretty sure there are. Now it's time for my face that I may be. Everything has been safe so far. Let's see if it stays that way. What? What? Warning, the following file is subject to level 715-5 classification. Part of this document may not be accessible without the proper security clearance. It went from safe to Keter back to safe. And it says, uh, special containment procedures are outdated, see below. 715 is to be contained at the blank, uh, the point of origin within the blank city mall in blank, Ohio. Remote surveillance of 715 has been authorized and any images produced by it are to be collected by the foundation personnel opposing his mall employees. These images are to be returned to Site-81 for further examination. The Keter Class Containment Procedure Amendment, which is outdated now, said 15 is to be contained within a maximum security large item locker at Site-19. Access to it is limited to personnel with 715-4 special clearance or above. Under no circumstances are any personnel, regardless of classification level, to enter or activate 715 in any way. Examination of the interior is to be done by a remotely controlled drone only. And since the B are considered Class V cognito hazardous entities, and due to their nature cannot be properly identified without the use of optical enhancing enhancement technology, and since the B are to be terminated immediately upon identification identification using whatever means necessary, and then all the safe procedure amendment, it is to be contained within a maximum security storage locker at Site 81. No other containment procedures are currently necessary. Foundation personnel are restricted from any interaction with any known instances of B. Information regarding Site-81-715 is on a need-to-know basis. Administrators uh, administrators with the proper security clearance may view this information at the end of the file. Site-15 is a take-your-own-photo photo photo uh, model photo booth manufactured by the Sony Corporation in 1972. Site-15 displays no anomalous characteristics in its design or appearance. A small metal tag has been added to the backside of the machine, but significant wear has, been obs has obscured any text contained on the tag. It used to say, 17 will not activate unless an individual sits within the main booth area and put inputs the necessary tokens into the activation slot. And now it says, 17 has been known to animate sporadically, producing images believed to be modified from previous shots. The image behind this activity is currently unknown, and it said, although research is ongoing. Images produced by 17 are often heavily distorted, used to say the reason is unknown. Individuals exiting 715 are to be classified as 715B instances and do not appear outwardly anomalous. A instances are currently contained within Site-81-715. Research into the nature of these instances is currently restricted, you say pending approval. A instances, data restricted, see below for additional information. Protocol, access restricted. Please, you, 
Access using the authorization code. Access granted. Warning! Top secret. Violation Site 81715 protocol utilized in accordance to standards uh, developed by Site 19 Director, Site 81 Director, and Overwatch Command. The following protocol has been established in order to maintain the safety and security of Site 81715 and the personnel therein. Location, City Mall and uh, Blank, Ohio. Security Level Delta. Description of the location. Site 81715 is believed to be an extra-dimensional space situated below the Blank City Mall and Blank, Ohio. This space is accessible via a service door, which says, The door does not appear on any blueprints of the mall, located on the southwest wall of the sub-basement number 3. The space within is a large cavernous room containing a deep pit. The interior of this space appears to have been cut out of the surrounding limestone. The walls of the pit are composed of a currently unknown biological substance similar to human fat tissue. The walls of this pit can constantly secrete a strong corrosive substance, making access into this pit particularly dangerous. Upon activation of 715, an instance of A will appear within this pit. These instances are typically similar to the subject who has just used 715, with the exception of major facial abnormalities, including extensive lacerations, large growth to the point of unrecognizability, or the absence of facial features at all. Instances of A will attempt to scale the walls of the pit, digging into the fleshy tissue for support. These instances are currently considered hostile, and Foundation security personnel stationed at Site 81715 are authorized to dispatch these instances with as much force as necessary. Research into the nature of A instances is ongoing. It is currently unknown how many of them existed within the pit. Authorized by the following administrators, Jack Bright, Carlisle Actus, and 052. Addendum, uh, Addendum 715A, Access Restricted. Let's check it out. Top Secret, Reclassification Briefing. Wow, this is long. So let's check it out. The inconsistencies with 715B instances were first brought to our attention after researcher Gerald Patton tested 715 himself. It was noted in his personnel file that shortly after this incident, he turned down a request to transfer to the 2090 project. A position that would have allowed researcher Patton more freedom in his research than the 715 project, as well as allowing more vacation time and a higher pay grade. This was noted as unusual, but was otherwise ignored. Researcher Patton had not turned down any previous promotion. Sometime later, during a routine sweep of Site 81 for reality bending anomalies, Patton did not appear for inspection despite this sweep being mandatory for all staff members at the site. Due to the large number of personnel processed in this procedure, again, this was largely overlooked. It was not until Site 81 research head Dr. Agatha Wrights began processing personnel information that these behaviors became apparent. It was noted in Dr. Wright's initial report that both the relocation to the 2090 project and the personnel sweep would have subjected researcher Patton to technology designed to detect reality distortions. In both instances, Patton managed to avoid being put in these positions. Following up with the report, Dr. Wrights had a Fulman Breaker Anomalous Optical Enhancement device discreetly rigged in Researcher Patton's quarters. After processing the information gathered from the footage, it became evident that our understanding of 715 was flawed. To be frank, we've been killing the wrong subjects. The collected footage showed that when put through a filter designed to remove local anomalous effects, Researcher Patton appeared to be one of the creatures we've seen within the pit at Site 81715. There is no record of Researcher Patton having gained ever gained access to Site-81715 or even being aware of its existence, thanks in large part to the previous administration's secrecy campaign regarding that area, so it was unknown how an instance of A could have escaped our security. Then we used the same devices to observe the instances of 715A within Site-81715 and, well, they're humans. They're all humans. They're not like those things that appear... Th the, they are not like those things that they appear to be when we look at them. They're human beings, and they've been trying to tell us, but we can't understand them, so we've been shooting them. In our haste, we quickly upgraded the classification to Keter and began attempting to collect all of the B instances we were aware of. We managed to get an interview in with the one that looks like Researcher Patton as well. Due to the information recovered from this interview, we've rescinded the classification upgrade and locked them 15 in a secure vault. The current status for the project is pending. We're not going to acknowledge the problem anymore, and we're not going to go looking for B instances. We haven't been able to verify the patent instances claims, but if there are as many of these running around as we think there are, it will be better for normalcy if we just let them be for now. At least until we can figure out what they want. As for the A instances, let's just consider the protocol listed above null until we can figure out something better. We've been advised that it would not be wise to remove them from Site 81715. As unfortunate as it is, this is our current plan. Assistant Director Weaving, Site 81.
interesting. And that brings us to Incident Report A. Which is actually a sheet of paper. Director K. Actus. Assistant Director J. Weaving. SCP Foundation site... something. I guess that's supposed to be 81. Uh, Overwatch Command. Anomalous Entity Report. Head Researcher T. Baker. Subject 7... That... Looks like it says 751B. Uh, full report, 715B7 instance. Agent David K. Fredrickson was taken into Foundation custody today after an investigation revealed that the agent was an instance of B7. During preliminary observation of the instance, it was discovered that B7 was discreetly emitting low-level beta radiation directed at Site 81715. These emissions seemed random, but were considered part a point of interest. During autopsy of B7 at Site 80, which... I, both I-81, it was noted that the emission increased in both energy, output, and frequency. Shortly thereafter, Site-80 experienced a power outage and containment breach. Site-81 was placed on lockdown, though no disturbances were noted in the object. During post-breach investigation of Site-80, it was discovered that the body of B-7 had disappeared. There was no indication of a forced entry into the B research wing. Video surveillance of Site-80 confirmed that several members of staff, all involved in the 715 project, entered the B wing lab and escaped the site with body of seven, uh, B7. The image attached below was left at the Timothy Baker. My ears that I may hear, my eyes that I may see, my mouth that I may speak. Do not touch my face. Well, that, that was weird. That was a whole episode of safe entries that didn't really feel like they sh they're safe at all. Like, we had one that might destroy the universe, one that breaks sight, one that can control reality, one that eats jade and messes with brains, and the possibility that there's a whole bunch of body snatchers in the Foundation that are just going about their business provided you don't look at them too hard. Sounds about right. So, this has been Anashi Sasuke. This is episode 152 of Let's Read the SP Foundation Wiki. In the next episode, we'll be checking out the train, the ambassador, eyeball, lightbringer, and astronomically inclined crane. And we got another Dr. Wondertainment episode coming up in a couple of days, so that's something to look forward to as well. So, thanks again for watching, and I will see y'all in the next one. Later.